Greetings, mammals, and welcome back to another episode of Chicken Police Painted Red. We went and to the hop dog and met Timothy Saltwater, who found out the police had taken Zip away for some reason. Found Zip had hid something inside his jukebox, looks like a medical wristband. And then after giving a little bit of interrogation to Zip, we gleaned a little bit more information about the situation before they were able to take him down to the hole and interrogate him there. So now we're probably going to head over to Dr. Bubos so we can figure out where this medical wristband most likely came from. All right, let's get started. Also, full disclosure, uh, the game had a weird error and crash or something, so I had to play all over again to get to this point. And it turns out the missing person I was uh, looking for or didn't, I guess, meet or I met them, but they didn't tell me to reveal their information was Archibald, the Ram Bouncer. Now we're all caught up. That's it. That's pretty much it. Yep. All right. Let's get started. All right. We're going to head over to Bubo's place. But first. Mm. Yep. Nope. That's it. All right. To Bubo's. Hello, Ursula, dear. Oh, oh what's the rush? So that's Is there Ursula. something wrong? You got claws. Wrong. Wrong. That dim witted, insane, ragged old. Stinky out. That's what's wrong. Okie dokie. Sorry, Ursula. Whoa, whoa. It's all right, Ursula. Just tell us what happened. What happened? You happened. And Wester's goons. It was supposed to be the only day of the year we could have relaxed a little. Oh, well, uh, well, you know, Ivan's goons messed it up for us. We came later. We're sorry, Ursula. You're right. Like I oh. care, Marty. Sorry. I'm tired of this. Tired of the bitter old owl, and I'm tired of waiting. And? Never mind. I'm going. This time, I'm going for good. Oh no! Hang in there, Ursula. And if there's anything we can do to help. I don't think she wants our help. I think she's just probably just trying very hard not to kill us. Anything? Of course there is, my dear. I never want to see your faces again. Aww, why? We have delightful chicken faces. Ouch. I'm going to try to talk to the old owl, all right? <laughs> Good luck with that. Well, you can talk to him, but I don't know if you can get, you know, knock any sense into him. Oh, and uh, Ursula, thanks for all you've done for us with the car. You know... I'm starting to regret it. No regrets. That was... Terrifying? A little bit? He's a big scary bear. Rough. Yeah, we'll say that. That's a nice little, uh, a nice way of putting it. Yeah, but understandable. I only see Bubo once a year, and <laughs> even that's way too much. He is a interesting individual. A lot of people feel the same about us. Ah, yeah. I mean, who ever wants to see the chicken police? Because they usually just bring a bad omens. Yeah, that's true. Ill tidings. All right, let's talk to Bubo. Bo oh, I have information to glean. Bebel. Yeah, see, Archibald is who I was missing. The ram. The Archibald Blackjack Conway. Species: Ram. Ovis Aries. Gender: Male. Special feature. Big as a mountain, talks like a poet, smells like a barn. <laughs> ah. The boulder standing guard in front of the entrance to the Tsar Club, he probably reports straight to Ivan Wesley. Not to mention he's exceptionally well educated and has an elaborate vocabulary. Blackjack and his furry buddy are doing anything they can to make us bite the dust. They haven't succeeded yet. Yet. If they're doing anything they can, they're doing a really terrible job. Ursula got really mad at the old owl, but it doesn't seem to upset Boo Boo that much. He is just dead inside. Oh, poor Boo Boo. Or poor us. Poor Ursula. Getting her life, take part of her life just ruined by this psycho. Not a psycho. He's just, he's mentally unwell. Hey, what's up, Doc? Somehow we guessed we'd find you still awake. He is a nocturnal creature. Are eagle owls nocturnal? I think most owls or all owls are nocturnal. Stop playing innocent. I've heard that little intermezzo. I have the ears of an owl, you know. Hmm. We're very sorry, Bubo. I'm sure she'll come back. 
Are you certain of this? Of course she'll come back. She loves me. I don't know why. And she's afraid that I'll drink myself to death once she's gone for good. Mm. She's not wrong about that. Maybe it's she's just finally ripping off this old band-aid, which is a wound in her heart. What do you want? Haven't you caused enough trouble already? We have, well, we were second trouble. The goons initiated it. We're here for some information. Then we'll be out of your hair. I mean, feathers. Yeah, see? Who cares? So what do you want? And be quick about it. Like lightning. All right, fine. Talk to us. What was that ruckus all about? Ursula's not one to lose her patience quickly. She has literally infinite patience, boys. But somewhere, even infinity has to end. That, that's not what infinity is. I think infinity's infinite because it has no end. Yeah. Oh, shut up, Martin. Yeah, Martin. But no, seriously, Martin's right, or Marty is correct, that the infin infinity means unending. I'll zip it. You could say she has near infinite patience, but not infinite. Otherwise, it never runs out. <sighs> this day was too much for her. We were supposed to go out for a date or something. It's New Year's Eve after all, you know. But that's when those bastards arrived. Then the even worse bastards. You. We are infinitely aware of what day it is. And that was too much for her. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, see? Somehow tonight, we're shocking everybody we come across. Yep. And don't you think that's a sign? No, it's just a perk of the job. Sign of what? That the time for the chicken police is over. Don't you point your finger at us. On the contrary, old man. Everything's the same as it used to be. Yeah, see? Great wild ones preserve us. But spit it out. What exactly do you want? And make it snappy, will ya? You know, if you spoke a little bit faster, we can get this over faster, too. You're right, Doc. Expediency is key! Expediency is a word. Say, Bubo, about Ursula. What about her? She's a bear. Well, that's just it. What if she's not coming back? I'm a little worried about you, Doc. And you know that's not my style. Yeah, I don't worry about anybody except... Uh, don't, I don't worry. Well, don't worry, boys. The wind's blowing. The sun shining. Oof, look at that big giant eyeball. And Ursula always comes back. Exactly. There are things in the universe that are unchangeable. Touching, but you should be prepared for the worst. Hmm. I thought Molly was coming back too, you know. We all think many things doesn't make them true. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I trust Ursula, Sonny. What else can I do? Improve your act a little bit and not be such a awful person? Well, to be honest, that's all you can do. No, there's more. There's always something you can do. Do more! What do you know about this wristband, Bubo? Bubo! Zip said they gave these to patients in hospitals. That's why we came back to you. You're the only doctor we know about, which is sad, because that means the police department currently does not have a coroner, which means they get a dead body in, and they're like, yep, that's a dead body. They died. That's all we got. Hmm. Something similar, yes, but not exactly the same. It's different. One of these things is not like the other? And? I don't know what the other thing is. And what? What? Don't you mean? And who? Well, what do you think? Where's this from? 
You mean, who did it belong to? How the hoot would I know, Sonny? Mm. What am I, some kind of psychic? Maybe. That I put my hands on it and tell you? Well, you won't know until you try. Okay, let's try another approach. Yes. The corpse with a wristband. Do you have any idea why Wessler's men were looking for Zip so hard? I don't. How should I know? Why should I care? Beak. I actually have no idea why you should care. He had to hide a body. The body of someone Wessler killed. The wristband is from the corpse. Hmm. Really? Hmm. Ooh. Who is responsible? That rang a bell, old owl. Who do you think I am? Well, boys, Your if I'm right, you're in deep shit. Eh, don't worry about it. He's not the first person to tell us today. That's more like it. Tell us, Boobo. Tell us! So, Wessler, the wristband, and a corpse, huh? He looks very much like I know the connection. <laughs> or at least I have a hunch. No, you have big feathery ears. Out with it, owl face. Yeah, well, that's the only face he's got. Okay, don't peck me, chickens. Hobart Ibn Wessler has a relative who happens to be a resident at an insane asylum. How does he know that? The band is very likely from there. Wait, a relative? What kind of relative? Yeah. You don't know? I thought you were the detectives. <laughs> Anyway, Ibn Wessler has a twin brother, Albert. I mean, honestly, there's there's a whole lot of information which we don't seem to know, which we should already know, being detectives. Albert Wessler. You put it together very skillfully, Marty. Yes, Albert Wessler. He's a madman kept in solitary confinement. Hmm. Do you think he's the corpse? But why? How the hell should I know that? Uh, yeah, you ask a lot of questions that it's like, why would they know this thing? Thanks, Bubo. If what you told us is true, then this time we'll owe you one. It is a strange night indeed. Will wanders never cease? Oh, he seems unamused. Now he owes one. They owe him one. But he, like, owes them infinitely one, so he's still in the negative. Tell us about so, Albert. Albert Wessler. Which asylum do you mean, Bubo? Bubo! It's got some fancy long name. I don't remember, but I have a brochure. Let me find it for you. Where are you? Are you telling me? Or is that, why are you looking at me? Look at them. Talk, talk to the chickens. Don't talk to the fourth wall. I'm not here. Nothing is here. This is not a game. This is your reality. Thanks, Bubo. Uh, here it is. Let there be peace forever. Mental institution for ill and damaged minds. <laughs> Quite a big fool. Right, it's the L-T-B-P-F-M-I-F-I-A-D. For short, that's still a ridiculously long name. Where can we find it? I've never heard of it. It's a good six-hour drive from Clawville, maybe more. Oh, snap. But you'll find everything in the brochure. Will we? You're the best, Bubo. You finally proved useful. I wouldn't say the best, but as far as we know of medical practitioners, he's the only one that I'm aware of. So he's the, he's the best of the best of the... He's the only one. He's also oh, the worst. Finally? Now get your chicken scratchers out of here while I'm asking nicely. Yeah, do their feet have talons? Just one more thing. Yes? What's that, Bubo? Bubo! If that someone was really Albert Wessler, the trouble's bigger than you think. Oh, yeah? It's always bigger than we think, Bubo. We're used to it. Yeah, see? You don't understand. Hmm? Ibn Wessler never loved and respected anyone in his life like he did his brother Albert. Oh, really? So what? 
So you put him in a mental institution? Then the problem's bigger than we thought. A cornered rat bites. Most cornered animals get aggressive. Oh, thanks for worrying about us, Doc. But there's no way back from here. Too far, too late. To turn back now. We're like hounds, old man. Once we've caught someone's leg, we never let it go. Oh, well, eventually you will. Who? Not while you're alive, eh? Oh, Bubo, you just know how to turn things on its head. Yeah, exactly. Well, goodbye then, fellas. And I wouldn't mind if you never visited me again. Yeah, I'm sure the feeling is mutual, Bubo. You're a freaky weird owl. The pleasure was all ours, Doc. You got any pain meds we can get on the way out? Because we feel you still probably have broken ribs and are probably hurting. No? No more drugs? You want to talk to us anymore? Any more questions? Oh, Zip is a rat. That rat you mentioned was Zip. Yeah, wouldn't he know that because he called Zip? Should I be surprised or what? I knew it was him. He knew who it was. Yeah. Yeah, we knew you knew. That we knew that you knew that we knew. Did you know that? What did that old raccoon do this time? Oh, you know, just be himself. Ibn was blackmailing him with something. That's what we wanted to ask you. Do you know anything about it? What do you know? I don't care about Wessler's dealings, Sonny. I patch up whoever winds up here, and I don't care if they're cops or gangsters. It doesn't matter who. Yeah, it's the same thing. Hmm. Or gangster cops. Yes. Yeah, it's the same thing. Wait, what? Oh, brother. Let's go, what? I don't... That was weird. Are you okay, Bubo? Oh wow, his his jacket, unless his, you know, curled up right here. Oh, it's his vest. That's his vest, and he has a jacket. I get it. Oh, his pants are a little elastic. How very peculiar. All right, Bubo. Who? Hey, weren't you about to ask me something? Oh, he just finished asking you something. Okay. Uh, yeah, we were. So... Boobaloo! Bye, Bubo. See you later. It's been terrifying at your place. Um, we'll look at our book before we leave, and then we'll, uh, something. The wristband is very likely from an insane asylum where Ibn Wessler's secret twin was treated. The insane asylum. He capitalized that and wrote, used extra ink. What kind of pen does he have? Is it not a ballpoint? I don't know what kind of technology they have in this world. Name, Albert Tadius. Vessler, species, rat, ratus. Gender, male, special feature. He's a dangerous lunatic. He's a crazy, crazy rat. Albert Wessler is Hobart Ibn Wessler's twin brother who is being treated in an insane asylum far from the city. Hmm. Hmm. What's in my bag? Oh, the brochure. You're the best, Bubo. You finally proved useful. Let there be peace forever. Mental institution for ill and damaged minds. We are waiting for you. Call us from Clawville at 555-966. Clawville State. Just follow the asylum road east. Bushmarsh 966. Wow, this, this asylum road takes us to the asylum. That's just a little on the nose, isn't it? All right. Wait, what's this? Oh, interesting. You can see everything that's in the room. Neat. All right, let's go where the map takes us to. Um, anywhere else? Why would we still go to these places? All right, let me just see if they're important or not. Stand by. All right, there was nothing of use of those six places. They're already gleaned and spoken to and taken care of. So let's go to the Hotel Atlas and see if we can put some clues together. We had to Clips. gather ourselves, take a deep breath, and <gasps> think over what we knew so far. What the chickens had I got myself into? What did I drag Marty into? Certain death. Moreover, what did we pull the whole city into? Destruction. This was going to be one of those cases that changed things forever. But I wasn't worried about myself. It didn't matter to me. Too many pieces had been plucked off this old rooster. But Marty's different. He's too good of a bird and too good of a cop to end up like me. Oh, really? A secret twin brother? 
Sonny, I'm starting to feel like we're really in a detective novel. A cheap one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, listen, Marty. What am I listening to? What is it, Boss Bird? Secrets. I think it's best if we go our separate ways. <laughs> no, the chicken police are separating. What? Are you joking? I know you have a weak sense of humor, but there's a limit to everything. Oh, okay. They're not getting separated. I'm not joking, Marty. They are getting separated. Well, I certainly hope you are. Okay, they're not getting separated. Whatever comes next, you don't need to be mixed up in it. You have someone to go home to. Okay, now I'm just confused. God damn it, Sonny. Can you hear yourself? What do you think? I endured all this to give up now? What do you take me for? No, pal. You're not getting rid of me so easily. Yeah, Sonny. Marty's here to stay. I mean, he did have a few near-death experiences. Sometimes that kind of stuff just makes you want to stick around. I just want you to keep your career and your life intact, you moron. Just accept it, shake my hand, and go home. Your wife, Laura, is waiting for you. Wait, is Laura his wife or his girlfriend? Because different characters have said different things. What is his girlfriend? What is Laura? One more word, Sonny, and I swear I'm gonna bash your beak in. I risked my life more than once tonight. You yeah. Know why? Because you really, really like this and you've been bored as hell at the police station and this is more exciting than just shooting at the shooting range? No. Why? I just said it. Because we're a team. We have been a team for almost a decade. Oh. I don't care what Blood Boil says or whatever's on a goddamn piece of paper. We're the chicken police, Sonny. And we always will be. Hey, Marty, don't diss the piece of paper. The piece of paper commands all. You have to do things because the paper tells you. I'm sorry. You're right. Oh my god, you guys are so confusing. We're gonna go to that insane asylum and wrap this shit up fast and clean. Yeah, just like you said, even if it kills us. We're gonna do this or die trying. Thanks, Marty. Without you, I'd most likely already be sleeping the big sleep. Oh, Sonny, you're so dramatic. Birds of a feather flock together, right? No, you're not supposed to- What? No, stop that. <laughs> like you say, partner. Uh, let's drop this before you start crying on me, okay? Marty did say, and Sonny doesn't have emotions. All the emotions he has is just sadness and regret. Yeah, I hope not. And anger. You almost just did. Ah, cluck off, Marty. I don't know if he has happiness. I don't know if that's in his um, vocabulary. That's the spirit. The Sonny I know and hate. Yeah. Hmm. Why is that window open? Is somebody gonna climb in? What floor are you on? Anyway, okay. Well, uh, we should contact the uh, insane asylum, I guess. Boopy doopy doopy doo. I don't know why I'm looking at this. I need to look inside my case. Five 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 nine six six. Okay, okay. Let's call them now. Actually, um, let's see if we can call Lewis. See if he wants to help us. Oh, he didn't want to answer. Okay. Um, all right. We'll call the insane asylum then. The asylum. Really? Is nobody answering the phone? All right. Let's talk to Marty about. Oh, insane asylum. So where exactly is this place? A few hours drive from here, in the middle of nowhere. It's a creepy old mansion, of course. How do you know that? There's a picture is not very, you know, telling of what it is. You think it's is. a good idea to go there? What if it's a trap? <laughs> it's a trap! I told you, you can still go back. Yeah. Huh, wouldn't you love that? No such luck, boss. If I get killed or locked up forever in an insane asylum, that's gonna be on you. That's a lot of pressure there, Marty. Thanks, pal. I deserve that. A little bit. Okie dokie. Natasha Katsenko! You still trust her? No. I think she's part of some sort of conspiracy. I never trusted her, Marty. I mean, you believe her? Eh. I'm sure she was honestly afraid. People don't fake it that easy. But I can understand why she didn't tell us about her uh, former profession. Or how she knows Molly. Hmm. Yeah, that too. 
And the death of Deborah complicated things even more. They Well, they added murder to this case, that's for sure. Hey, Sonny, she... She didn't seduce you. Deborah? Right? I mean, Natasha. Oh. Ah, don't be stupid, Monty. My old ticker hasn't been beating for a long time. Not that way, anyway. You're talking about your heart, right? Yeah, all right, boss. Okie doke. Well, that was bad there. That settles it. A corpse with the wristband. So what do you think happened to the corpse? The zipper he told us. It got left in the uh, hive and probably got et. Probably been eaten. Horrible to think about, but even if half of what they say about the hive is true, starvation, riots, arson, predation. Does that include, like, domestic beetle? Are there domestic beetle people in this world? Because they would just eat all the flesh off the bone and just leave the bones. You're telling me. Makes my feathers stand on end when I think about what goes on in there. And we pretend we don't know about it. As if Roachtown isn't even part of Clawville. Is it? Or is it just an unincorporated part of Clawville? Or is it literally just like a neighborhood? This won't end well. I'm afraid soon Clawville's gonna burn once again. And because of its own foolishness. We're gonna burn it down. Burn down everything. Raise it down. Raise. And then raise it back up. Bigger and better than it was before. Well, that's if another meat war doesn't break out first. Because then... The whole wilderness will burn. That's not good. Lovely prospect, eh? Meet where you say. Either way, it was a damn clever move for Wessler to hide the body in Roachtown. It's the only place no one will ever find it. Well, the residents of Roachtown will find it. Like the belly of a burning ship. Hmm. Oh, I think that was an intentional red herring. Ah. Sounds about right. They're not a red herring. Roast chickens. Zip Murphy! Who'd have thought? I believed that little rat. I thought he'd changed. Idiot. Once a zip, always a zip. There's a point when it's too late to change, Marty. His past caught up with him. Whatever he did since then doesn't matter. Yeah, see? Not much. Boy, man, he opened a coffee shop that makes damn good coffee. Exactly. And that's the case with us, too. That's why I won't back down, even though a voice in my head is screaming right now, leave it all to hell and have another drink. You can do two things. You can have another drink and not back down. Maybe we should do that. Have a drink. Maybe we should. Yeah. Uh, okie dokie. What do you think, Marty? What does Marty think? What? You care what I think? You must have hit your head pretty bad. You spread a little bit. Stop fooling around, Marty. I'm serious. So what do you think about everything? You know, Marty, you are a detective. Well, I think we're in deep shit. But to be honest, Ibn Wessler is in deeper shit. We've established all of this already. Well, not a part about Ibn Wessler, but you are all both in deep shit, as you have been told and discussed. Do you think he really murdered his brother? But why? And what does it have to do with Natasha? And the threats. Why would he murder his brother? Uh, doesn't add up yet. Something's missing. Let's visit the institution and try to find out what we can about this Albert Wessler fella. Yeah, that would be helpful. Exactly. If he's the dead body, we've got to know what the motive was. If we can't, and if he's still alive, we gotta ask him directly. The motive was secrecy. And what do you think, Sonny? I think Ibn, Albert, and Natasha are the three key players in this case. And that all of it has something to do with the brothel. Hmm, maybe. And the fact that Natasha used to be a... <clears throat> courtesan? Like he's uncomfortable saying that. Yeah, that too. Listen, Sonny, about Molly... You didn't have to bring that up. Oh, just forget it, Marty, okay? She's not part of my life anymore. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Forget it. Let's concentrate on the case and on making it out alive and helping Natasha too. You really wanna help Natasha now? Now it makes me wonder like what other information she has kept from us. Whatever you say, Boss Bird. So you think Natasha's really in danger? She's definitely in something. It could be, or she could even be behind everything. Dun, dun, dun! 
No, you don't believe that. Eh, yeah, well, not, not wholly, but there's a percentage of me that thinks so. I'm not sure what I believe, Monty. I believe what I believe, and that's that I don't know what I believe. And that's what I believe. Let's see. Things got mixed up at the brothel. Yep, buddy. Investigate. At the brothel? Was it Ibn? Yes, that's going to be right. Uh, Wessler's twin. No, uh, Natasha's secret. That's it. Ibn found out that Natasha was a secret spy. Natasha was a courtesan before. And Ibn tried to keep that a secret. Natasha was a secret lover of Zip. Natasha worked at the brothel. And Zavos wanted to keep that a secret. Natasha this one. used to work there. That's obvious. And Ibn wanted to keep that a secret. Why is he trying to keep that a secret? He just keep me a secret that his lady liked to hook up. Yes, that's it. Wristband. A secret, it seems. Somebody else had to pay for. Zip dealt with the body and kept the wristband for himself. Zip stole the wristband. The wristband is the key and the evidence that Zip killed someone. Zip killed someone to keep his secret on Ibn Wessler's orders. Hmm. This, this is the most accurate Somebody one. died for that secret. Zip hid the body, but he kept the wristband. Hmm. Clues! Wessler's twin. Yes, that's going to be right. Who could it belong to? We, Albert Wessler, the resident of an insane asylum. The dead body was almost certainly Albert Wessler, a resident of an insane asylum. But why did he have to die? That's what we're trying to figure out. Case closed. What? It's not closed. We're still investigating it. God, this case is still open. Stop saying it's closed. It's this aspect of the case has been determined? Oh well. All right, we got my codex. Bless us. Insane Asylum. Mental Institute with a ridiculously long name and a ridiculously long history. According to the pictures, it looks just like the castle of the vampire bats in those cheap horror movies. Vampire bats don't turn you into vampires. They just take a little bit of your blood because that's what they get their nutrients from. They just go, thank you. Usually bite like the legs of livestock and stuff. The Great Meat War was the biggest and most bloody conflict in the known history of the wilderness, ranging from 822 to 849. Wow, that's a long time. In the beginning, it only affected Altera, the two-headed continent, but in its later years, it spread to 12 colonial provinces, including all of Quaville's floor colonies. During the Meat War, about 80 to 90 million animals died. Wow, that's a, that's a long, uh, that's a lot of animals. And after the war, 27 species were declared extinct. 27? Wow. That's over two dozen. That's a lot. Oof, war is awful. The only people that benefit from war are the people who sell the weapons. Okay. I've seen all this stuff in here. Wait, let me talk to Marty real quick. Okay, so the picture is more or less clear. Ibn's got his brother killed because... He learned Natasha worked in a brothel. No, well, that could be the case, but I believe the roots go deeper than that. Yeah, I don't think it's that simple. This, uh, the way this case is going, it must be much more complicated. Which we'd only learn if we talk to him. I mean, if the corpse isn't him, because then we'd need a medium. How helpful would it be speaking to somebody in an asylum? How much information could you factually glean out of them? Which would be exciting, but... Maybe it's enough if we ask the doctor who treated him. That probably seems more like a practical idea. That too, yeah. But where's the fun in that? There is no fun in that. That's, this is a detective work. You've got to be serious and cut to the chase. Okay, Marty, thanks for your not help. All right, well, let's, uh, I don't know, I guess call the asylum? Oh, wait, yeah, there's only three numbers. I was about to keep dialing numbers. Hello? Hello? Hi! You've called the Let There Be Peace Forever Mental Institution for Ill and Damaged Minds. Oh, good. What can I do for you, sir? Or madam? You can help me. Uh, well, I'd like to, uh, inquire about a patient who I believe is being, uh, uh treated at your institution. Uh, his name is Albert Wessler. 
Dun dun dun. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't give out that information if you don't have the password given to relatives. Do you have one? Password? Unfortunately, I don't have that. I'm not a relative. I'm calling from the Clawville Police Department. Yeah, see? Oh, I see. In that case, officer, I'd advise you to visit our institution personally. Our director and I would be happy to answer your questions. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, miss. I guess I'll do that. You've been very helpful. We'll welcome you with open arms, sir. Have yourself a beautiful starlit night. Are you well? Oh, uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, goodbye. A little weird. See you soon. Will you? Okay, well, that's that. So? So, with a needle pulling her head. We have to go there. Ah, the thought gives me goosebumps. Very bumpy. Chicken bumps aren't good enough for you? No, it's gotta go all the way up to goosebumps. Ha ha ha. You're getting bumpy skin, I guess. Um, all right, let's go. So, I get the couch? Oh, you're sleeping here. It'd be better if I called Lewis. He'll open up a room for you to sleep in. Yeah. Whew, great idea. Well, I guess Lewis will help that way. Now I should call Lewis. Hey, Lewis, it's, uh, it's me again. Oh, <laughs> hello, Sonny. What's up? Were you sleeping, pal? Me? Oh, I w w wasn't. Uh, anyway, I'm always at your service. Would you open up a room for Marty? Naturally, Sonny. Thanks, Lewis. I'm not even gonna say it. I, I will. You owe me one. Again. Yeah. How many do you owe, Lewis? Seven? Eight? Ten? Thirty-two? Oh. It's like light outside, sort of. What happened? Okay. Uh... Marty, let's get out of here. Sorry for the mess, Marty. I uh, rarely have visitors. You could still clean up a little bit for yourself. Don't worry about it, Sonny. I didn't expect anything else. Yes, yeah, Sonny. Uh, thanks. Santino turns into Sonny. But you can call him Santi. Santino Fatherland. All right, let's schedule the Ashane Asylum. Chapter 4. Farewell, my lovely. I slept like I used to sleep years ago, like a miner or a soldier, empty, dead tired. Then I saw Tessa, my darling little daughter. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't recall her face. I reached out to her, but she just kept getting further and further away. How do you know it was your daughter? Then I saw Molly, but she wasn't real. Just the ghost of a memory. I'm here, I cried. But all I heard was laughter. Not hers. Who's there? Suddenly, she appeared. Natasha. Just stood there laughing. But her eyes were cold. Then she said something. Painted red. Painted red. Painted red. That was just a dream, Sonny. Nothing more. That's Marty. I looked at Marty and I saw the same thing in his eyes as he probably saw in mine. It's time to hit the brakes, to turn back, go home and forget about all of this. <laughs> of course, I stepped on the gas instead. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything good, but this... It's quite swanky. Ooh, just like a horror movie. Or that. I was thinking the same. Okie dokie. Appearances can be deceiving. They will, or can be. Let's hope so. Oh, hey, look, it's a beaver or badger or groundhog. I don't know what he is. This guy seems strangely familiar to me. Yeah? You don't say. You've been treated here, too. That would explain a lot. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm serious. Take a closer look. Who are you? No. 
Well, no, it can't be. Who is it? Are you tell? I'm oh, sure, sorry. Of it, pal. It seems the gossip was true. The eternal king of jazz in a madhouse. DB. Oh no, no, no! The poor devil. Well, he probably gets free room and board, but he's also probably a little insane. Hey, man. Sorry. Even if you manage to escape, there's nothing but hills and forests for a hundred miles. 98.7 miles, Marty. Imagine how many poor lunatic ghosts must haunt those woods. Does that mean the staff, like, live here? Ooh, Sonny, you're creeping me out. What an exciting life they all must live. Ooh, a weird mural. This picture. A little creepy. It's very special. Yeah. It's like one of those photos that they put in like pediatricians' offices or doctors' offices to make you like it's like doctor office art. They did a good job with that because it's kind of freaky looking, but it's also supposed to convey some message. I don't know what. A dog, a mouse, and a cat. The cat's face looks green behind this uh grayish green tree and a bird don't know what that is fox king hector i think his name was hector or harold henry Odolo. odor hmm stairs can't leave corridor nurse of all the great wild ones where's her face greetings miss is it really you it's us well uh Yes. It is us. Um, if we are alive. Yes, it really is you. The chicken police. Oh. Uh, I'm afraid so. Yep. Of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Hey, miss, we'd like to ask... Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read every book about you and your adventures, and I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Okie dokie. Indeed. You can't imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. Um, uh, I... Well, I can try. We really... Oh god, oh god, oh god. Take a deep breath, Miranda. Take a deep breath. Are you okay, miss? Yes, I am. I just needed some air. So, dear detectives. Well, she... miss, uh, we have some questions, if you don't mind. Is she just a neck with no head? I'd love to answer all of your questions, detectives. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we got questions for you, that's for sure. Sorry, but I still can't believe it's really you. It's really us in the flesh. Neither can we. You can't imagine how wonderful it is that I can help you in one of your cases. <gasps> Does this mean it will become a new book? And maybe I will be in it? Uh, depends who writes it. Uh, miss, those books aren't really... Don't even tell me. No, no, no. I don't want to know. Let it be a surprise instead. Oh, it's definitely going to be a surprise when you find out the books aren't real. No, I, I didn't mean... Leave it to me, Sonny. I'm good at this. Thank you, miss. Your words are very flattering, and we are honored. No, I thank you. I'll never forget this day. Um, I guess you met a celebrity group or couple or guys. I don't know what they are. Couple? I met technically they a couple. Either, that's for sure. We're happy to bring you joy, miss. Anytime. Okay, let's um, see if I can ask her some questions. Oh. oh. Say, miss, uh, what can you tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War, oh. and during the war, it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous specialist. Hmm. The place seems pretty empty. Do many people work here? He looks like a serpent of some kind. We have 32 residents and seven nurses including me. 
We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff, and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. So there are six other nurses working at this location. Yeah, do you all live at this institute, since there's nothing nearby for hundreds of miles? I see. Now, this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Sure. Exactly. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. Oh! Quite a guy. Snake is a friends with the giraffe. He certainly is. Good for him. What can you tell us about Dr. Sesu Quetzalcoatl? So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world-famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Hmm. Psycho... what? Psychotherapy. Unraveling the mind. It's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's really good to know. Fascinating. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet, uh... Other important persons? Yeah, see? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, like, uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately, I don't think he has time right now. Oh, I'm sure he'll make time for us. He's swamped, is he? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. All the time. I thought so. Oh, fudge. Stranger man. Now, what can you say about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Maybe. Of course. Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only wear them inside the institution. All right, well, maybe somebody took it off outside. Huh, I see. The wristband does belong to one of our residents. But I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more due to regulations. Well, what can you tell me? Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Please. Miranda, this case is a matter of life and death. Lives are in your hands. Yeah, maybe we can guilt trip you. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll do it. Albert Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Okay. Figures. Just as we thought. Thank you, Miranda. We'll never forget this. We'll never forget anything. We remember everything. About who... What? Please, don't make me blush. And don't tell anyone you heard it from me. Heard what from you? We don't know what you're talking about. Oh, we won't. I promise. Shush. We know nothing. So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. Please wait here. Oh, always waiting. Thank you. Dr. Quetzal <laughs> will see you. Oh. He's waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. Noise. What a surprise. It's enough to mention Wessler's name and all the doors are open. Yeah, that's how it kind of works. I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but do you think Albert is in danger? He might be. Danger? What do you mean? We haven't heard from him since he disappeared. Oh. And we're really, really worried. Yeah. I see. Uh, we don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. Hmm. Great wild ones protect him. Well, I hope Where his family's not paying for him. No idea, Marty. The smell ugh, of all that's furry. I'll never get used to it. Have you ever smelled a chicken coop, Marty? Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty. Eh. But they feel exactly the same about us. That's because you're covered in sweat. Exactly. Oh, hey, he is a snake. Great wild ones, you scared the hell out of me. Ah. I already sensed your arrival from afar. You know, snakes have a different sense of smell. And birds used to be our prey once upon a time. 
Well, that's a little scary, but also the past. So let's just stick to the present day and the future. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. I would put civilized in quotes. Lucky. Please, take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? You can tell us about this wristband. You've got an interesting office. Your office is uh, rather Puritan. <laughs> Simple, I mean. Ain't that the truth? Well, yes. I can't let my mind wander from my work. I only keep what's essential in my office. Hmm. I see. That makes sense. Any new side projects? Desk? An isle of reason in a sea of insanity. Insanity is such a strong word, and it's mostly an abstract idea. Where does insanity start, and how long is one not insane? Interesting questions. Am I normal, or are you? Maybe neither of us. But why you gotta get so philosophical on us? You see, that's something I think about a lot nowadays. I guess we're all a little crazy. If you like, I can give you an appointment. <laughs> oh, this is your chance, Sonny. Don't miss it. We're already here. <laughs> Marty, clock up. Hmm. Okie dokie. Let's just, uh, let's just talk to Dr. Qu oh, wait, we have things to glean. Nurse. Miranda the nurse. Species, giraffe. Giraffa. It's gender, female. Special feature, full of life, full of hope, full of almost everything. And she is a big fan of us, unfortunately. She also has no face. An overly nice nurse we met behind the desk of the asylum. Her name is Miranda, and she's an embarrassingly huge fan of the chicken police. Dr. Sesuas. Quetzalcoatl. Green tree python. Morelia beridis. Gender, male. Special feature. Cold, distant, professional, and he gives me the creeps. <laughs> creeps. The professor is a real polyhister. Scientist, writer, philosopher, and who knows what else. Somebody knows. Oh yeah, Albert. I guess Albert's the last one to find. We might have a Bingo, Albert Wessler has disappeared from the asylum. Interesting. Well, what can you tell us, Dr. Quetzal? To be honest, gentlemen, your visit is anything but a surprise. Oh, yeah? I could even say I was expecting it. Please don't. What an introduction. Yeah. Please forgive me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle of things. How very rude of me. My name is Dr. Sethius Quetzalcoatl, but most call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. You look like you hypnotize people. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the Predatory Division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Hmm. Ah, we're used to it. Certainly. We have some questions about one of your patients, if you don't mind. Well, please oh, sorry be about that. specific, Detective. I'm sure he has many patients. Look, Doctor, we're too tired to play cat and mouse. Not that snake and chicken sounds any better. Oh, it sounds so much better. Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two detectives. Being very funny? We know you know. It's about Albert Wessler. Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Bullseye! I thought you called that bingo. Well, yes. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here, who's also a very particular medical case. Hmm, really? What? Now, that's much more interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Please? Because Albert, regrettably, has disappeared, and you are police detectives, I have no reason not to talk to you. 
Of course, I'm at your service. But you must understand, I can't disclose information about my patients. What can you disclose? Not even if it's a matter of life and death. Oh, that might change things. Everything's a matter of life and death in here, detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, not the body. You know what? Health is still health. Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Uh oh. Please, detective, just do your job and I'll do mine. Yeah, don't do other people's jobs for them unless they ask for help or need it. Kidoki. How long was Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time, his first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Depression, panic attacks, and schizophrenia. Oh. Was he brought here immediately after the first signs that something wasn't right? You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity Sanity is that animals are ashamed of it. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that's unfortunate. Mental health is important. It should be treated appropriately. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. Yeah, most people keep their secrets away because they're embarrassed. I couldn't have said it better myself. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. They had a good amount of money. Indeed, they well, were rather poor, did. but we offer our services gratis. Oh. Do you guys get paid per patient, or do you get, like, a lump sum? Then how do you sustain yourselves? By the grace of the treasury of King Hector the ah, Third, of yeah. course. They're government-funded. I wouldn't have guessed that. My family and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. Santino. Okie doke. Tell us about the asylum. What kind of a place is this exactly? I assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum. No. It used to be a mansion. Construction started during the occupation in 622. Then it stood empty for almost a century until finally it went to the crown of Clawville when Hector's great-grandfather took the throne. The rest is history. Hmm. How long have you been working in here? In building. I've worked here for more than 30 years, but it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. Hmm. So if I count correctly, as soon as it went to the crown, it was seized by your family. Oh, well, not exactly that way. That's Close. almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. What a lovely inheritance. Hmm, not terrible. Madame Zavas. Tell me, Doctor, do you know Madame Zavas? Just like everybody else, I've heard of her. But I never had the pleasure of meeting her in person. I'm sure she's an interesting case. Everyone's an interesting case. Oh, you can be sure about that. I'd gladly get you two together if I had the chance. A spare cell would suit her very much. Hmm. Is that so? As it turns out, she likes small, narrow, secret places. You throwing a little shade there, Sonny? Oh, I see. What a coincidence. Fantastic. Wait, the snake likes it too? All right, now we can interrogate him. First, my codex. Info. The professor's family has governed the mental health facility and its estate for more than a hundred years. Quite a heritage, eh? There we go. The half-citizen occupation, or half-century occupation. Since its foundation, an attempt to conquer Clawville has only been made once. The half-century occupation started in 622 and lasted until 677. During this time, the Harar Empire took over all of Clawville's territories except its colonies, which in the end, with the help of Svolaso and Lavoslavia, took back control over Clawville. Interesting. All right, well, that's where we're gonna end uh, 
this episode of Chicken Police Paint It Red. Make sure you're subscribed so you know when the next episode is posted and we can begin our interrogation of Dr. Quetzalcoatl. He is not an Aztec Mayan deity. Uh, he's a snake guy. Uh, and I don't remember if the Quetzalcoatl was a serpent or if it was a bird. I think it was a serpent god. <laughs> I don't know. Education, Corgi, tell us a little bit more about that. Huh. Hmm. Fascinating. Anyway. In addition to subscribing, make sure you give a like if you've enjoyed this episode when what's happening so far in the game, and give a comment about your theories and thoughts. I'm curious about Ibn Wessler's twin brother and how he plays into all of this and why that was important. So to find out about that and hopefully find out more about what's going on in this insane case as it's taken a hard left turn, uh, come back next time since you subscribed. All right. In the meantime, you have yourselves a nice everything. Bye. Mason, no talking. <laughs>